My name is Ralph and welcome back to Slay the Spire. We're going to be continuing with The Watcher. Now, I kind of still got to understand this character a little bit more. So, at the very least, while we're doing the unlocks, I'm not going to be turning Ascension on. Feels like I still got a little bit to learn. Turn off the Twitch interaction there at the very top. Now, uh, in between the first episode and this episode, I have streamed, uh, I think, six hours of this over on Twitch. Uh, the VOD of that is going to be published on YouTube. If it isn't necessarily out by this point, it will be out extremely soon. Savvy? Also, I'm going to be streaming every single day this week. So, feel free to check the comments below to see if I've posted a thing that says, Hey, I'm going to be live in like uh, X or so hours. Now, the reason that I mentioned the stream is because I am doing a different save file for the YouTube series as well as for the stream series. But, obviously, there are certain interactions that I now understand slightly better. So, there's no content that you've missed, except for, I guess, the stream, if you consider it. Uh, but I will have a little bit more information in this run than I did in the previous run. Savvy? Alright. Uh, only consideration... Well, I mean, there's also the consideration of lose your starting relic to obtain a random boss relic, right? Because the pure water... At the start of each combat, add a miracle into your hand. That's just one and that's like a one energy pump. Now, a lot of the worst boss relics have been removed from the boss relic pool and moved out into the shop relic, uncommon, common, and rare tiers. So this seems like a much more viable option now. Inability to rest. Ooh, okay, that's uh sure, that's what we have, I guess. Enter Vigilance so that I'm ready to alternate out of it. Uh, so if I go for Eruption, Eruption's 9, 924. That's lethal. Sweet. Flying Sleeves, Third Eye, Cut Through Fate. Flying Sleeves will upgrade to 6 twice. Third Eye is 9, Scry 5. And Cut Through Fate is a Heavy Scry card. So we've got two different Heavy Scry cards on offer here. I don't know if the scry build is viable. Because I'm trying to think of payoffs for the scry build and I can only think of weave right now. Yeah, I'm worried about taking any of those. I'm skipping. Upgrade, me. Um, hmm. Especially with the extra energy, the ability to draw three is particularly interesting. Flash of Steel seems incredible here. Worship. No, never mind. Uh, are we just going to go worship? Right? But there's weave, the payoff as well. Oh, God. There's a lot of different things we could have done here. So worship is game five mantra. If you didn't see the last episode, uh, I, I did use worship in the, in the final combat, but I'll describe it a little bit here. Game five mantra. Whenever you obtain 10 Mantra, you enter a stance called Divinity. When you enter Divinity, you gain 3 energy. So that means the second play of Worship, especially uh, as long as you play it at the start of the turn, doesn't cost you. It gives you an energy refund, but it gives you 3 energy refund to turn into Divinity and your attacks deal triple damage. However, you exit the stance at the end of the turn. The fact that I don't have anything that actually does the initial damage makes me feel a little uneasy about using Worship here. I'm honestly kind of looking at the possibility of taking Protect and Windmill Stance. Specifically because of the Coffee Dripper, I need to make sure that I cover my defensive uh, capabilities first. And if I take Protect, I can't take Worship. It's fine. Uh, take the 100, definitely. Okay, so, against the cultist with this character, I think it's actually correct to take damage early. The cultist is really mean <laughs> to this character in particular. That said, we do have the extra energy of uh, exiting the calm stance in the next turn, as well as a protect, so... We were a little better than otherwise. 
Empty Mind, exit your stance, draw two cards. Upgrades to draw three. That's a really, really good thing in a deck that already has the Vigilance. But why do I care about cycling? Why do I care about that draw right now? Hmm. Is it possible that I don't? <sighs> I don't have enough Calm Triggers. To, I mean, I know I've just started and I'm talking about what I don't have, but it's kind of worth doing at the moment, especially considering I have already a little bit extra on base draw in the deck and retain can be considered a kind of draw. I like Empty Mind a lot. Should I take it to build it? Yeah, I should take it to build it. Next upgrade has to be on Windmill Strike. Depends on who this Elite is, but we might go for a Power Potion early. Unfortunately, I can't open with uh, being in Eruption form. This enemy is actually real rough. Without that Windmill Strike early, especially. I'm going to use a potion here. Whenever a card is retained, lower its cost by one. And that doesn't say for this turn or lower its cost by one until played. Ooh. Okay. Fine. I'm going to rely on that working how I've read it. Because that effectively just means I need to get back to my Protect and Windmill Strike as soon as possible. Uh, so... I can Eruption, Windmill, and then Empty Mines. Actually, I get energy back. I can Vigilance at the end of the turn. So it's Eruption, Windmill, Strike, Vigilance. Hold the Protect. Perfect. Yeah, so Windmill Strike did retain its lower cost. That's really, really important. Very interesting as well. Okay, now I'll get back into Vigilance. I could leave Vigilance right now. So I can do 9, 30. So 39 and 12 is 51. I have lethal. This character has ridiculous reaches for lethal, and it's really really interesting but it also will mean that i'm gonna miss a lot of lethal please be gentle with me we're all learning this character together and i really don't like the idea of having to go away and learn the character myself so that i can come back and show them off right especially considering how new they are i think like I want my first, like, 40 hours with this character to be recorded, and then I'll go away and play, like, 50 hours in my own time and come back and go, okay, now I've learned all of these different things. Uh, or especially if I start to stall uh, in the character and don't necessarily understand where to go from, because I can't... I don't always necessarily build the best standard practices while I'm recording. Just because, obviously, my uh, uh, priorities are quite split. Talk to the hand. Whenever this enemy takes damage, gain two block. Now it's worth noting, this is coded as attack damage. Specifically, that means that talk to the hand plus juggernaut is not an infinite. However, talk to the hand is still pretty good. Is it? Maybe not. I don't play many attacks unless I'm killing. Let's skip. Let's upgrade the empty mines. Tiny chest, uh, gain 30 gold. You'll 10% more likely to find treasure on crash mark runes. Sure. 
I'll hit an upgrade on Eruption literally just to extend its reach. Go for another Elite. Garbage. Well, empty mines, eruption, strike, energy potion, double strike. I'm just gonna go for the kills. That's great. Sweet. Gear, yo, you cannot get strength up to three. Rest times up to three times maximum. Okay, never mind. We're pivoting back to a Roth build. The fact that this character has a lot of difficulty getting strength is one of the things that balances their ability to on activation, like easily have a double uh, damage multiplier at any time. Uh, okay. Swivel, gain eight block. The next attack you play costs zero. I've, uh, I think that's pretty good. Can hit either of these two quite effectively. Eruption, windmill. Reach Heaven, deal 8 damage, shuffle a Through Violence into your draw pile, and the Through Violence is a 0 that deals 20 by itself. Yeah, I think I want Reach Heaven. You know the insane thing? I've even got two rests here at the very end. I'm going to get two strength. And I've hit all of the important upgrades already. This run is real good. Uh, talk to the hand about... Well, now we do care about talk to the hand, right? Because we intend on hitting the enemy more times. And talk to the hand, obviously, uh, because it says whenever it takes damage, specifically attack damage, but damage, it triggers multiple times on multi-hit attacks. And multi-hit attacks are obviously incentivized as a result of having strength. Mm. AoE fights are really, really hard with this character. Uh, okay. Thankfully, the Gremlin Nob takes, what, three turns? Uh, sorry, Gremlin Wizard takes three turns for us. One, two, and eight. We'll be fine. Oh, no, wait, it doesn't. Thankfully, it didn't matter. Wave of the Hand, Empty Mind, Swivel. Uh, wave of the Hand is Calm, Apply to Weak, Wrath, Apply to Vulnerable. Now, I mentioned in the previous episode that I didn't think this necessarily uh, sounded like a good translation rate. However, in this character's card set, as we saw over the course of the rest of that episode, they don't have that much access to Vulnerability or Weak. So the ability to apply those comes at a premium. Is Wave of the Hand good? Probably. It's probably really good. <laughs> Not in the opening hand, though. Oh my god, is that a bad opening hand for this deck. Yikes. So we just get to eat this hit here. Trying to get my uh, retains out there. So let's go eruption, apply vulnerability, damage, damage. Empty mind to get out of this stance. Yep. And then I'm gonna go. Talk to the hand, reach heaven. I'm not perfecting this fight, but as long as I don't die, it doesn't matter. Because we full heal since we're not in the low ascension. Oh, we full heal because we are in low ascension, rather, sorry. Okay, through violence doesn't retain. That's unfortunate. We're just hoping to retain it for the right turn. Oh, well. Heaven double defense. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Eruption, windmill strike, and then through violence over the top of it. And we should pretty much just be able to go straight for the kill this turn. Sweet. Okay. Nirvana, whenever you play a card, upgrade it for the rest of the combat. Uh, upgrades to become a Nate. Flow state. Roth, enter calm, calm, enter Roth. That's... That card seems very simple. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. I haven't even played with it, by the way. So if, if you're assuming everything I'm saying is, oh, he tried it out on stream. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying that I think that's probably going to be really good. Wallop. Deal 12 damage, gain block equal to the unblocked damage dealt. Upgrades to 15. Has the strength modifier. We have an incentive to be in Roth form. It's 100% wallop. Uh, well, especially after I've finished doing my lifting, I can't rest at rest site, so I probably don't want to not be able to smith as well. Uh, potions are really, really important, but our defensiveness is a bit of premium as well. As you can see here, three energy relics. Having removed a lot of the bad relics that were diluting the pool, Gaining energy is much more reliable. I also think that patch had to be shipped at the same time as this character because this character has a lot of effects that are quite heavy in cost. And in fact, their base deck is really heavy in cost. Four ones, strikes, four ones, defends, and then two two costs. Sure, you do refund a little bit of that of energy when uh, changing between Calm and Wrath, but you might not necessarily draw them in that order. I think it has to be Philosopher's Stone. I think overall, it will cause us less damage than Sozu's potions will save us. Or rather than the potions we will be able to get as a result of not having Sozu to save us. Okay. Pretty happy to go double elite again. Ooh, triple? We'll start on out a path that uh, allows us to go for the triple, but yeah, we'll see whether or not we actually go for that. Go all into Roth. And murder. Scroll. Draw three cards. You can all play skills for the rest of the turn. Ooh. That's re it's good to have the draw when you need to get to attacks, especially because Wallop is defense, and the problem usually with not being able to play skills for the rest of the turn is not being able to defend. We take Scroll. Wallop protect. Sure. Give me a rough fight. Eruption plus 16. So 17, 16 is 33. Exactly. Okay, so I can make the enemy vulnerable. And yeah, no, I can kill them. I could have made them vulnerable first. Juice, as well as protect, fasting, and path to victory. Uh, okay. Path to victory is really interesting because it upgrades to be zero cost as well as not exhaust anymore. So there's no reason not to take it. Except in this deck where it won't be activatable after scroll. I mean, it's still got way better hits and, you know, it has to be drawn from scroll exclusively for it to be a problem, but it's worth considering. Uh, gang three artifact. Gang three artifact in particular against the heart. And the, it's the heart and the collector, uh, because they both apply weakness, vulnerability, and frailty all at the same time. It can be really effective against them. Uh, getting another protect in here seems like a good idea, though. I think protect, like protect, is just completely insane. It's very, very simple text, but being able to guarantee that you're going to be able to block on the right turns is incredible. Going for the fight. Okay. 
So eruption reach heaven kills the frontliner. Fine. I'll scroll. Uh, next turn, one of them dies to through violence anyway. Through violence is the back line, a wallop hits the front line, and we win. Red Mask. At the start of each combat, apply one weak to all enemies. The fact that we have this is also really, really good. This and Anchor are going to be incredible for us. Uh, vengeance, Consecrate, and Inner Peace. Consecrate. Deal five damage to all enemies. We have Girya, so that's like eight to all enemies for zero on a zero cost card, so it's really effective to play after scroll. Take that. Really? All right. Do I gain Jax? Do I put Jax in this deck? I think we stop before doing that. I think having strength is good, but we don't have the ability to heal up from the damage Jax will be dealing to us affect it. No, but we scale through a fight so much more effectively through Jax than anything else here. Oh, is that true? No, if we hold Windmill Strike. No, we're fine. We'll go for the special relic. So it's just being aggressive on turn one is now a little bit more incentivized. Kind of want to go for the extra elite as well. Scroll. Yeah, it's a fine turn. At least we have the protect stall if we need it. Looks like we won't. I'm going to also go for Empty Mind just for the draw. Oh, and then I'm just going to... Almost kill the enemy. Setting up for the kill this turn. Taking only two damage to do so. Another Consecrate. Yep. We're going real, real aggressive with this build, y'all. Vigilance Empty Mind is really good. Draws three cards. Draws three cards. And I refund the two energy from playing Vigilance. So I'm drawing six cards for one energy. Effectively. Incredible. Okay, I'm going to go Reach Heaven on the Fat Gremlin. Right, and then I'll have eight cards in hand. Eight, I play the scroll. No. Yeah, eight cards in hand, I play the scroll. Looking for the Consecrate, and I found it. Lovely. That's what we needed. Ooh, we've even got Eruption available this turn. So we'll erupt, the enemy becomes vulnerable, and then 66 damage. This character has the ability to do such ridiculous burst damage. It's incredible. Okay. Worship we've seen before, protect we've seen before. Judgment. If an enemy has 30 or less HP, set their HP to zero. Upgrades to 40, by the way. Now, this is specifically co uh, currently coded as HB loss. Thank you very much for Keo for having checked the code for me and uh, having uh, specifically laid that out. So as a direct result, that means that intangibility will prevent this from killing a target. Invincibility will prevent this from killing a target. At the moment, I expect that's likely going to be changed because this being targeted as HP loss doesn't make sense. It should just bypass that because it doesn't, it never specifies that it's dealing damage, just setting. But that's how it functions at the moment. Now, because it doesn't deal damage, it's not affected by us being in a stance or anything like that. I don't know if I care about it. Wait, no, I care about it a lot next floor, don't I? Because I only have to hit a single character once and then finish them with a judgment. 
Yeah, we take judgment. Uh, let's start with the vigilance. Defense and we'll strike back on it. I don't need to always go completely ham on the first turn. Hmm. I definitely want to weaken the shelled parasite. And then I want to protect and then kill the backliner, I think. What? Well, I guess I counted my energy wrong. Huh, I thought I was going to be fine that turn. Strange. Um, okay, eruption wallop. It's incorrect. Enemies dealing double damage, but guess what? So am I. Uh, yeah, so I can't scroll into an attack and then judgment afterwards. Mm, if I scroll, would I play any of those attacks? Probably not. <laughs> Especially because I already have lethal. Windmill strike, conclude, and weave. So conclude, I mentioned before thinking that, oh, it's fine. It's just like an all-out attack. Not necessarily. Because this character has... A bunch of cards. I say a bunch. A couple cards uh, that carry the same text. End your turn. Which means you can only play one of them in the deck. Effectively. Unless you really want them to be tripping over each other's toes. And I don't. Uh, but there are also cards that say can only be played if this is the only attack in your hand. Which conclude obviously interferes with. Uh, we'll avoid this. Start with the empty mind. Vigilance. Wrong order for that card draw, unfortunately. Really wrong order for that card draw. Ouch. I'm going to use both of these potions. Both of them? I'm just going to use one right now. Because we're definitely going to take enough damage over the course of this fight for it to be important. Well, at least I'm not being weak in this turn. So if I windmill strike the backliner, it goes down to two above the value for judgment killing. Rough. So it'd have to be that as well as strike. 34, 34, 17. 34, 17 is 51. So I can eruption windmill to kill the backliner. And then... It would only take one more strike for Judgment to be able to kill the Frontliner, but if I use the Fear Potion, I can reach that naturally. Excellent. And have a much better turn. Now, ideally, we let the rest of the HP gain, uh, but I suspect I'm not going to... Yeah, definitely not going to have time to do all of that. Actually... I would have to wait two more turns for it. To yeah, no, I'm going for skill. Or Calcum, if you end a turn without block, gain six block. Another strength potion. Enter calm. Ooh, that's really important. Enter calm on a zero when I have an empty mind already in the deck. Mwah. Scroll and scroll don't work together. One scroll draws the other scroll and the second scroll can't be used. Now, does that mean you shouldn't put two scrolls in the same deck? That's not what I'm saying. Definitely not. Do you put a second battle trance in? Yeah. I mean, if you're battle trancing every turn rather than every other turn, sure, you get occasionally negated to draw, but you're still far ahead. Still going with clear the mind, though. Really? I gotta start asking for relics more. It's just giving me what I asked for. 
I think we might actually become more powerful by going over to this shop than going for this elite fight. Uh, wallop Consecrate. Our opening turns are complete garbage. That's that's one bad thing about this deck, but at the very least, we do have the Anchor and the Red Mask to try and help mitigate a little bit of that. Okay. So we changed mode, and now we change mode again, and again... Character's potential is insane. Weave, Wreath of Flame, and Crescendo. None of those are needed. Snake Park could be rough. Go for an empty mind first. Okay. I'm in no stance, so it doesn't matter. Great opening turn for us, but fine. I think it's protect, defend, windmill strike. Just as much damage as I can get out there. And... Yeah, with Eruption left in the deck, we'll go with the Vigilance draw. That'll get us lethal. Rai 5, gain 9, no, whenever you switch stances, draw a card. That'll draw us a lot of cards. But I don't think it's important. It only does it in our first cycle. Cleanse evil, add X smites to your hand. That's not particularly important for us, because we'll retain them, but then what do we do with them, right? How are we going to have the ability to generate that many of them if we're going to be defending on that turn? And if we're not going to be defending on that turn, it has to be because we've just killed the enemy. There's not that many turns where the enemy is just going to do nothing at this point in the game. Uh, so I want to hard pass these, but I'm also going to drop that speed potion for a weak potion. Overall, I think that's going to be more HP saved. Fossilized Helix. Prevent the first time you lose HP each combat. Ridiculous. We'll take that. Frozen Eye, when viewing your draw car, uh, draw pile, sorry, when viewing your draw pile, cards are now shown in the correct order. I kind of want that as well. Eternal Feather, for every five cards in your deck, heal three HP whenever you go to rest site. I mean, we can't heal naturally, and we will probably need HP. So I think actually maybe it's the Eternal Feather. I mean, when it's not a boss relic, this is a surprisingly good relic. As long as it's not a boss one. Toy Ornithopter, whenever you use a potion, heal for five HP. Oh, lovely. Uh, let's do one more Lifruni. Collector. Start with Vigilance Empty Mind. Don't have the ability to change a stance back after this. Slightly, unfortunately. Okay. I'm going to re enter Calm. And. Thoughts at hand. Reach Heaven. Consecrate Strike. I'm not going to scroll. There's enough cards left in my deck that I still want to be able to draw. Okay, Through Violence is not a kill on a target here, of course. Because I'm not in the right stance. So I'm going to need all three of those attacks in order to take down one target. I'm uncomfortable with that. It's 
So if we weakened you, you'd lose five, and then I still end up taking uh, my first buffy hit this turn. That's fine. We're one short of being able to judge the enemy here. I'm actually going to use the strength potion to guarantee it. Otherwise, this turn is just complete garbage. I'll pivot straight for damage here. Because I can probably pivot back out of it again afterwards. Woo! Yep, and that's only even if I need to. Uh, let's concentrate, reach heaven. Go for the scroll, see if we can get the heaven. No, we can't, but we get past a bunch of cards. And at the very least, the retains stay with us, even if I couldn't have used it that turn. Yeah. So we're vulnerable and the enemy's going for a 75. We bit rough. We'll go through violence. He didn't wallop as well. And then I can vigilance. Yeah. I'll vigilance to change my stance. I'll energy potion and empty mind to gain the energy back. Excellent. We're actually going to get the perfection here. Probably. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, windmill. Reach heaven. Exact kill on judgment. Oh, yeah. That dex part, that's another wallop. But it's up against Vault. Vault. Gain one intangible and end your turn. At the start of your next turn, deal 15 damage. Upgrades to 20. That's just a free turn's worth of damage. And it allows us to just retain the... Like, increment anything that does its retain triggers as well. It's a great way to end a turn where I've been playing with... A lot of Wrath stuff going on. And I have two energy relics. Yeah, I'm going Vault. And Cursed Key. Empty Cage is still only two cards. Pandora's Box is the same as it was. All right, so we're going Cursed Key. And we'll probably just not pick up any chests on this ball. Neat. This path has a lot of upgrades. Really early shop as well. Better path? Not really. Not really. Let's try and make sure that I'm not unnecessarily putting a bunch of dazes into this deck. Being denied our draw is probably one of the most uh, threatening things to us at this point. Go protect. Eruption through violence, kill you, and then kill. <sighs> Enter calm on a zero again. Uh, maybe I have too much. I'm I'm constantly calm right now. I need to be a little more wrathful. Uh, crescendo, especially upgraded, would be really interesting. Because we find it difficult to get into wrath form when we need it. obviously retain it you get there right uh yeah it's eruption this turn and wallop almost certainly i don't know why i said almost certainly rather than completely definitely 100 percent certainly fear no evil if the enemy intends to attack enter calm not interested just lucky not interested in prostrate not interested. okay prostrate came in in the previous episode so we'll have a little bit of a discussion about it. That is to say, it was unlocked in it. Uh, gain two Mantra. Gain one Vulnerable and add an Insight into your discard pile. The upgrade just gives you three Mantra. Now, when you hit 
10 or higher mantra, it removes all of your stacks of mantra and gives you divinity. So, for that reason, having, you know, a 3, a 3, a 3, and a 3 doesn't leave you with 2 mantra towards your next divinity. So, effects like this are very wasteful until you can pair them together to very closely hit and not overshoot 10. Obviously, Vigilance Eruption on the first turn here. That's mm -hmm. great, that's <laughs> Murder. My god. Oh, another empty mind! That's exactly what we needed. Okay. Those are some new relics. First relic is Melange. Whenever you shuffle your draw pile, scry three. Scry is look at the top X cards of your draw pile. You may discard any of them. When does this trigger? Does it trigger as soon as it's shuffled before you continue drawing? Because if it does, this is really impactful. There's also Ink Bottle. Whenever you play 10 cards, draw a card. And Clockwork Souvenir start each combat with one artifact, which will give us three strength from the mutagenic strength every single fight. <clears throat> this is going to be incredible. Yep, fight him. Yeah, just casual six strength as the Watcher at the start of every, every single fight. I'll start with the Swift Potion here, just because that turn didn't look really good. In fact, it still doesn't. Yikes. It's empty mines. Crescendo, Consecrate, Consecrate. Could have had to kill that turn. Unfortunately, while the cards still have beta, 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 like as they still look like this, it's really difficult for me immediately to visually differentiate between them. Uh, and especially if they have similar names, like Wave of the Hand and uh where's the other hand one? Wave of the Hand and Talk to the Hand, I get them confused with one another. Even if I've already played Talk to the Hand on that turn, evidently. Judgment. Shovel. You can have Dig for Relics at Rest Sites. Great. I had nothing else to do at Rest Sites at this point, and you've just given me that. Much appreciated. Swivel. Uh, yeah, we have enough decks to use that, especially with the Wallop and the Vault in the deck. And it's pre-upgraded. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go for extra ones here. Master of... Dramatic entrance? What? Yes, of course we take that. But Master of Strategy is way... So Dramatic Entrance would be really, really good if it wasn't for the fact that I'm about to go to the Time Eater. Like, I'm not that many fights from the end of this floor and not many of them will be AoE. So yes, it's good, but it's good for a different stage of the game. We take Master of Strategy. Bad hand. That's one bad hand, Harry. Let's clear the mind and then empty thou minds. Single protect is all it'll take for the full defense. Okay, let's continue the scroll. Vault? Do I vault at the end of the turn? I don't know. I'm already full defended. I don't think I do that. 
I think it's talk to the hand, reach heaven, strike, strike. Strike, Wallop, Windmill through Violence. It would be really nice if I was in an aggressive form for that, but unfortunately both of my abilities to enter Wrath are at the very bottom of the deck. Uh, am I okay with taking the hit this turn? I'm not really okay with taking the hit this turn. At the very least, Crescendo will retain... Yeah, I want the buffer to protect against these kinds of things. Here we go. As it turns out, that was a bad play. Thankfully, we can still block a hell of a lot off the back of it. I was very hopeful I was getting more attacks on that turn. Or at least Vault. Um, consecrate. Swivel. Now I'll Vault. I have the intangibility for this turn, and then I deal 50 on the next turn. And we can just erupt from the kill. Lovely. Preserved insect. Enemy of the link cards have 25% less HP. Bad time for it, bud. Flurry! I, so I've spoken recently, this was in particular in the last episode in this series, as well as in the stream series, that Flurry of Blows doesn't make sense unless you have access to strength, and this character doesn't have access to strength. We have access to strength. Blood Ball, sure. It's an upgraded chest, though. No. All it would take is a normality to screw me. On stance change. Now, triggering a stance counts as change. For what that's worth. Perfect turn. If I'm going to take the hit from the enemy this turn, I may as well do it against a big hit. Double defending does nothing. It just still hits the buffer. Which is even now weakened and vulnerable. I'm going to calm the mind, which gives me back my Flurry of Blows. Then I'll swivel into Eruption. Then Flurry of Blows. And Bolt. This character is incredible. Uh, <laughs> another wave of the hand, don't need it. Empty Fist, uh, Empty Mind, don't need either of those right now either. Extra energy on turn one? Wallop! Again! Yes! Is upgrading Wallop far more worth than digging? I don't think it is. I think we dig again. Bottle Flame upon pickup, choose an attack. Started combat with their own grumpy hands. Uh, uh, windmill? No, it's Flurry of Blows. Just so that I can start triggering the, you know, the ridiculous amount of damage we could be doing with it. So we're obviously not going for the heart in this build, but that's okay. We did it literally in my first episode with this character ever as I was reading their stuff for the first time. I was really, really proud of that. 
see the mind to gain some energy back. Trying to get into the right stance, not finding it yet. Throw that out and master clear. I mean, again, not the thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for Roth. That plus Consecrate will be enough. Scroll and yeah, now we get Eruption. Should have held the Consecrate literally just a couple more seconds there. We've been fine. That said, I forget that triggering that stance just gives us the flurry of blows back. Excellent. Okay, Perseverance, Path to Victory, and Follow-Up. Uh... Perseverance. Scaling defense. Seems correct. Especially pre-upgraded. Uh, two madnesses. They don't get pre-upgraded. Uh, they could hit pretty useful things. Still don't want them. And we'll dig a game. Centennial puzzle. The first time we lose HP each combat draw through cards. Let's also get four decks. Flurry of Blows, clear the mind. Flurry of Blows again. Weaken the enemy. One short of being able to prevent them from taking away my buffer this turn. Wallet by itself is enough for this full turn. I want to leave myself with the ability to play multiple cards next turn. So, four, probably. And, yeah, it looks like those four should definitely be as aggressive as I can possibly be. So, Eruption, Consecrate. Protect, Empty Mind. Oh, sorry! My bad. Uh, eruption, flurry of blows, consecrate and windmill. Get the enemy split that turn. Ridiculous. Patently ridiculous. Uh, I don't play anything else here. There's no need. Wallop is very defensive for us. Okay. Talk to the hand, wallop, reach heaven, or talk to the hand, wallop. Uh, no, it's talk to the hand, wallop, protection. Actually, you know what? I protect one short of fully defending, and I'll draw my extra three cards this turn. So at the end of this turn, I need to bolt. And the important thing. So we'll reach heaven. Strike. Oh! And that now has the reach heaven effect in the deck. I was really thinking... Wait. Do we not have lethal? No, we don't. Three, four, five, six. Six attacks left in the deck, and I managed to draw skill, 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 skill. Yeah, but there were more skills in the deck up until that point, so eh. It's a little unlucky, but it wasn't as unlucky as it kind of looks right now. I was really certain we were already going to have lethal. Oh, well. It's not like it mattered any different, though, because we already had lost the perfect specifically so that we could have triggered the Centennial Puzzle. 875. All right, and we get the second level of unlocks for this character. 
Step and Strike. Costs one less per switched starts this turn. Gain eight block, deal eight damage. Also, Mental Fortress capitalizing on that build. Uh, whenever you switch stances, gain four block and alpha. Shuffle a beta into your draw pile. Beta shuffles an omega into the bottom of your draw pile. If anyone would like spoilers on this, specifically on what beta then does with the omega, you can have a look in the comment section down below. I would appreciate if you would put spoiler warnings on uh, any descriptions of that kind of stuff at the moment. I know what it does at this point because I found out on stream, but I'll still be treating it with spoiler warnings until it appears in the actual run. For the moment though, my name is Moon Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. This is the new character, The Watcher. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and future. And hopefully we'll see you next time.